Today's project is how to winterize an RV. This is a 2019 Leisure Travel Van Serenity made in Manitoba, Canada. I took two years with four cycles of winterizing and dewinterizing to build my arsenal of experience. My process is still evolving, but I'd like to share what I've learned so others can have a head start on the learning curve. It's an intricate process consisting of many actions that can have you retracing your steps many times as you go from the front to the back and to the inside and outside, even under the coach and back again, opening and closing valves, faucets, and cycling pumps, etc. Why is this process so convoluted? There are two freshwater systems and two wastewater systems that must work together, and that requires a series of valves to keep them apart, but also allow them to support each other. Before I began the first time, I watched a video on the Leisure Travel Van website. When the video ended, I was confident, but it didn't take long for the confusion and frustration to set in. The model they demonstrated was different. Things didn't work out as expected. I even read the service manual, but the black and white images leave much to be desired in today's high-tech world. I recorded my first time so I would have a reference for the conversion back to service. It was very helpful several months later. While reviewing the video, I found ways to improve the process. I learn each time, even while creating this video. A keen observer will notice I'm wearing different clothes throughout the video. Because I use the best processes and footage from four different captures to improve the final product. A good first step is to apply shore power and cycle the master power switch on. The lights and pumps can be operated on battery power alone, but it's a good habit to support the batteries if AC voltage is available. My goal during the winterization process is to remove as much water as possible as quickly as possible. Drain the black water tank into a suitable container and dispose of it in a sanitary sewer. Remove the hose. Wear protective gloves at a minimum. The handle requires a firm pull to open the wastegate. That's a suitable name for it. Turn on the macerator pump and monitor the fill level of the container. This will prevent any unwelcome surprises. When the pump changes pitch and the flow surges, you've reached the limit of its ability to extract any more waste. Shut off the pump, close the wastegate, and cap the hose, and be sure to dispose of the waste properly. The toilet is a good choice for disposal. Return the hose to the container and open the gray water valve. Once again, turn on the macerator pump. This will empty the gray water tank and flush the internal sewer line and the hose. This will also help flush away any residual black water and sediment from the container. When the gray water is finished, cap the hose and the container. Once again, drain the container into a sanitary sewer. To prevent lingering odors and parasites from spawning, triple rinse the container. Here's an important point. Triple rinse does not mean fill the container to the top and dump it. Add approximately two inches of water to the container for the first rinse cycle. Cap the container and invert it and allow it to coat all the interior surfaces a couple of times. Then drain it and observe the water. If it's noticeably cleaner, you'll need less water each time you rinse it. The third cycle should be clear and odor free. When you're finished, before removing your gloves, wash your hands with hot soapy water. Return to the RV and rinse the sewer hose and valve handles with the outdoor shower. Store the waste hose, then wipe down the panel and the macerator switch with a damp paper towel. Leave the low point drain open to begin draining the water lines. It's important to verify the tanks are empty before moving on to the fresh water system. I chose to drain the water heater after the fresh water tank because the water heater drain will leave a puddle in front of the fresh water tank valve. I didn't want to lay in a puddle. The fresh water tank is forward of the rear wheels on the driver's side and approximately arm's reach under the vehicle. A diverter hose for the fresh water tank would be a great asset. 
It can be assembled from two common plumbing fittings and a hose for about $10. To drain the water heater, remove the exterior water heater access panel, release the upper latch on the yellow filter release lever, and be sure to stand aside as you pull down on the filter ejector. Then open the water pressure relief valve. Air will rush in and water will surge. Currently the water heater filter is removed and the drain is open. The water tank and the low point drain are also open. It's not necessary to blow the lines out if you're going to add water line antifreeze. However, I see two very good reasons to do so. First, it decreases the amount of antifreeze required to protect the fresh water system. It also lowers the volume in the filter, which makes it easier to remove without spilling it inside of the cabin. I set my air compressor pressure regulator to 40 pounds per square inch to ensure it was well below the waterline system pressure. I fashioned this right angle adapter using common fittings from the plumbing department. Your design can differ but it begins life with a three quarter inch garden hose adapter and reduces to a quarter inch and an air chuck is added. The water heater drain and the low point drain are both open. When the air pressure is applied, the water will find the easiest path to ground, literally. Close the low point drain as you observe the water heater drain. When the water stops, it's time to rotate the normal fill valve to blow air through the water tank drain. Return the valve to the normal, city water position. Go inside the RV and access the pump by removing the cushions and lifting the seat base. Now close each of the water heater valves. There are three. Starting at the bottom, there is a cold water, a recirculation valve, and a hot water valve. The lines will now begin to build pressure. Open the drain valve labeled D and observe the sight glass. When the water stops flowing, Close the valve. Open each of the faucets to blow out any residual water. Begin at the kitchen and work your way back to the shower. Don't forget to open the toilet rinse sprayer. With all the lines in the tank blown out, turn off the air pressure and remove the coupling from the system. To remove any residual air pressure, open the low point drain and open both faucets of the outdoor shower. The last step is to remove the screen from the water inlet and depress the check valve. It's now time to remove the water filter. To verify the system pressure is completely bled off, open an interior faucet. If the lines were not blown out, place a pan under the filter to prevent spills inside the compartment. Remove the filter bowl and remove the filter. Reinstall the bowl to close the system and allow the antifreeze to be pumped throughout the lines. The rear panel should remain open to check for leaks. The next step is very important. Before you enter the RV, verify the low point drain and the outdoor faucets are closed and the air coupling is removed and the fill valve is in the normal slash city water position. Close or verify that all faucets are closed. Then ensure the pump drain valve and the water heater valves are closed, or you'll dump antifreeze on the ground. This wastes money fast and you'll need more antifreeze. The first time I winterized the Serenity, the white siphon hose was tucked away so well in the nest of hoses, I couldn't tell it was loose and open on one end. It was a frustrating experience. If you need to track down the loose white hose, start at the winterization valve. The other white hose is the pump drain line. Remove the cap from the antifreeze and insert the hose before you turn on the pump. Open the winterization valve. This is a selector valve that shuts the water tank off and opens a siphon line to draw antifreeze into the pump. The fluid level drops quickly and the pump will build up pressure and stop unless you have a valve or faucet open. If you drain more than a half a gallon and the pump has not shut off, do a walk around, look for fresh spots on the ground, pay close attention to the water heater, the tank drain, the fill valve, the low point drain, and the water filter. Also check the fill valve to be sure you're not putting antifreeze into the fresh water tank. Observe the fresh water tank drain for pink residue. When your checks are complete, 
depressurize the system until the pump shuts off. Open each faucet from front to rear until you get a steady stream of pink liquid. Close the faucet and move to the next one. The antifreeze will be collected in the black and gray water tanks, but this will not adversely affect them and does not need to be drained. When the weather warms, it's time to restore the system. The concentrated antifreeze is reusable. Place a suitable container in the kitchen sink, turn on the pump, and open the faucet. Next, place the container under the low point drain and open both faucets and cycle the exterior water pump switch. Turn off the pump and leave the pan under the drain to gravity feed. Remove the filter screen from the water inlet and depress the check valve to deplete any pressure and drain any residual antifreeze. Remove the water filter bowl and recover the antifreeze. Next, reinstall the filter bowl without a filter and close the low point drain. Place the collection container under the pump drain near the water tank and return to the pump. Open the drain valve and turn on the pump and observe the sight glass for antifreeze. Turn off the pump when no more pink fluid is seen on the sight glass and it's frothy with air. Close the drain valve and shut off the pump. The Blue Hose is drinking water quality. It's manufactured of food safe materials with stainless steel fittings. I closed both ends together for storage to prevent contamination or a home for crawly critters. Support the end of the hose while it's being flushed, then connect the hose to the RV. Don't let the ends touch the ground or anything else you would not drink from. Although the water will be purged prior to filling the fresh water tank, don't introduce anything from the hose or the spigot into the system that could get lodged in a dead section of the piping. Ensure the selector valve is set to the normal city water position. Open the low point drain and then turn on the water supply to flush any residual through the system and out the low point drain. When the low point drain runs clear, go inside the RV and start at the back and open each of the valves in succession to flush any residual coolant from the system. Add a deodorizer tablet to the toilet and flush it. The water heater valves are closed so they do not require flushing at this time. If you open the water heater valves or the pump drain valve, the water will spill on the ground directly in front of the fresh water tank drain. These valves will be opened and flushed after the fresh water tank has been flushed. A diverter hose for the fresh water tank would be a great asset. Open the valve on the fresh water tank to clear any stagnant water or moisture that's collected over the winter. Rotate the fill handle to the tank fill position. Close the fresh water tank drain and remove the adapter if you installed one. The tank can now be filled and the progress can be monitored from the interior panel. When the tank is nearly full, reduce the volume and allow the tank to fill and flush through the overflow. Open the water heater access panel, open the filter lock lever and the pressure relief valve. Open the three water heater valves and the pump drain valve. Step outside and use the exterior pump switch as you observe the drains for blockage or contamination. Return to the RV and close the pump drain valve and retrieve the water heater filter screen. Install the filter and close the pressure relief valve. Next, turn on the pump, pressurize the system, and verify you have no leaks. Remove the drinking water hose and drain it carefully, being cautious not to allow the ends to touch contaminated surfaces. Close the ends together and stow it away. If the water filter is tight, Stop immediately and open a faucet to deplete the water pressure. Open the low point drain and depress the fill line check valve to deplete any water pressure in the system. Remove the water filter bowl, empty any residual water. Always clean the bowl prior to installing a new water filter. Using the exterior pump switch, cycle the pump and verify the filter bowl does not leak. Reinstall the check valve screen on the water filler valve. Close all the exterior panels and reinstall the cushions. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments section below. And remember, subscribers are always welcome.